Okay, so let's get started for today. So this piece um, has a lot of issues in it and I wanted to cover them. Uh, but before I do, I want to jump into some quick announcements. So to get your work critiqued, you want to see your work on my videos, you just have to go to istabrak.com. This is the Mecca. This is where it all happens. You go right here and click on the subreddit icon. That'll take you to my subreddit. On the top right corner, there's a subreddit icon to go there. And once you get there, uh, start uploading. Make sure you follow some rules, no NSF. I mean, you can have NSFW, you just have to mark it NSFW. And uh, so yeah, that's how to do it. Also, my portrait studio is still on sale on my store as well as my Gumroad class. Uh, my master class is also on sale uh, as well as my brushes. All the brushes you see me use are on my website and they're also on sale. Um, so please head over there and enjoy the sale prices while they last. Okay, so this has all kinds of problems. Um, the first problem, I'm going to list them out for you and then I'm going to fix them, is the neck is very thick. This is a thick old neck considering that she's got features that are very delicate, small bone features, do you know what I mean? Um, and the angle itself wouldn't show off this big a thickness in the neck. The neck would be somewhere around here. Then there is no base line for the chin. The chin just goes straight into a sharp point. Um, and that is problematic because that, that feels like the form has been ironed out. You've got no perspective, basically. Um, so there should be like this central point right here that's flat, that's the bottom of the of the chin from front view. We should still be, be seeing some of it. So technically, the chin ends right there. Once you find the chin, you find the top of the forehead. And you create a symmetry line coming down. That symmetry line is completely disregarded by the artist. Because right now, not only is there no rotational symmetry, there is like this, this um, displacement of all the features, as if you took all the features and you put them only on this side, but it's front view. So if this was front view, this is what the front view would look like. Again, this is a, a diagram of a front view. So your front view is skewed all the way that when you finally rotated it, to three quarter view, everything was sitting on the other side of the symmetry line. So we're gonna fix all that. <clears throat> then the eyes are stylized, uh, which is fine, but a stylized eye cannot be rotated. A stylized eye is a stencil, it's a sticker that you just, you just place down. You just kind of lower that sticker and it's just kind of floating down until it finally just gets lowered on top of the form. So how do you do a, a rotated sticker? You just kind of, you just kind of like, um, if this was the sticker from front view, you just kind of try to uh, distort it somehow to force it into three quarter view, which never looks right. So you're going to be losing points because you stylized. Stylizing is a hit that you take. It's damage that you take voluntarily from the realism. All right, so there's the 100% realism uh, potential, and then for every time you style, every layer of style you add, you take a hit, you make up for it by adding more volume, better shadows. You have to make up for that hit that you're taking. The eyebrows are not three quarter view eyebrows. The eyebrows are also not low angle eyebrows. So <clears throat> there are two motions happening. The first motion, is the rotation of the three quarter view from front view into three quarter view. The second motion is from perfectly facing the camera upward. So we have two motions happening. Um, so let me just load uh, female. Okay, so the two motions that are happening are as follows. Oopsie. <clears throat> There's the front view. All right, so motion number one. So let's get rid of the shadows for a second. Motion number one is that we have 
rotated the head. Let me turn off the joints. Motion number one, the head is rotating. Motion number two, the head is looking up. Okay, so you see how here we still have a base. for the chin. And though this might not be exactly what you're doing, but we still have a base for the chin. We also still have a symmetry line that's pretty much in between all of the features. So I am going to try to represent the style that you have here. I'm gonna to try to represent it while keeping the physics intact because the thing with anime style is that you can have a 3D model that's anime style, right? You can, but that 3D model can still rotate proportionately. Proportions have nothing to do with style. Proportional rotation and animation have nothing to do with style. They'll still have to rotate on some kind of volumetric plane. So those are the changes I'm gonna make and I'm gonna go, them, go through them pretty quickly. Um, because they will happen pretty quickly. So the first thing I'm gonna do is ignore the face. I'm just going to rotate the head properly. All right, so there's that gigantic thickness in the neck which does not match the character. And I don't know if she's like being snobby. I really don't know what's happening. She has a bit of a cheekbone on this side but no cheekbone on the other side. The eye needs to be pushed inward Whenever you guys rotate, all of a sudden, all of your portraits look like Andrew Loomis sketches or some kind of Bern Hogarth sketches. They look like extremely masculine, have really, really strong foreheads. All of the likeness goes out the window when you guys try to rotate. Um, and that's because you guys are dealing with too much on your plate. You're trying to rotate and preserve likeness. A true professional animator can rotate and preserve likeness. Um, but even in the best stuff you've ever seen animated, likeness is lost during rotation sometimes because it's hard. It's hard to manage all of that at the same time. So I'm rounding the bone structure to be more feminine. I'm raising the forehead so that it just feels a little bit less claustrophobic. I'm pushing the eyebrow towards that three quarter view and I'm raising the eyebrow up and away from the eye because the further we move the chin up, the shorter we get, the further the eyebrow gets from the eyes. And I, I don't know if you're trying to do this like snobby kind of expression, um, but really it's hard for me. Everyone always says on my comments, oh, you lost the expression, oh, you lost the expression. Honestly, I don't care. I don't care about the narrative or the expression. I'm just here for the, for the, for the form. I'm here for the science. And then, you know, you guys can do whatever you want after. Because I I can be here all day trying to decipher what expression they were going for. Because between all the low skill and the low experience, they could have meant anything. And I would have been wrong each time. Um, so at this point, I don't really care about the expression that much. There are critique hours where I cared about it. Um, and I preserved it, but uh, there are some where it's just so much going on, so many mistakes, there's only so much I can do, and so I want to prioritize what actually needs work. So again, I'm just trying to show this eye in perspective, so the lower eye lid dominates in a low angle perspective like this, and then the upper eyelid, the rest of the eyebrow, all of that, it needs to behave less and less like a front view eye and more and more like a three quarter view eye. So before, after, and we're still not even done. We're not even scratching the surface yet. And then I'm going to push this nostril back over here because I'm trying to follow where you had that glabella and the forehead and the placement of those, uh, of those features. And I'm really not, um, it's hard to see which, what you meant with, with this rotation. It's, it's really hard to, to decipher it. 
because you're trying something way out of your skill range and you're trying to do masterpieces and you're trying to avoid putting anything under the category of study because study is boring and you want to have fun and that's okay you can have fun um, but you are robbing yourself of the mileage that comes from a study a study happens quickly a study is done and done Whereas a masterpiece or an illustration, you waste time adding hair and style and making it fan art and all of that. I'm pretty sure this is like Jinx or something, um, I think, right? Uh, so, so like you're wasting time. You could just be jumping on the next study, doing like maybe 10 more of these low angle shots and you become really good at them and you're no longer a beginner at them. Um, it's, it's, it's beginner again is not a permanent state of existence beginner is just one stage you get over it pretty quickly you get over it the sooner you accept it and start doing studies so you are way 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 too early in your process to be um, trying the angles that, that make even the most intermediate or advanced students uh, 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 cry all right so what I did was I moved the lips so that both corners of the lips are now aligned on, on that same horizontal line I mentioned earlier with the chin. So that chin, the reason we found it, that like like uh, elusive hidden line of the base of the chin, again, it's not there before because you added that little point. And we found this like flatness to the chin. That is the line I'm making everything parallel on. You guys see what I'm saying? And I'm lowering the eye and I'm just trying my best to make all this make sense. So again, I, I don't know what you were trying to do with that expression. Do you see like it's hard to figure it out? Is she pouting? Is she just looking like she's tough? Is she angry? Um, is it like a sexy pout? Like, do you know what I'm saying? It's hard for me to figure out what you guys are trying to do sometimes. And so I'm leaving the eye all stylized and stuff, but I'm trying to preserve the realism on the level of rotation and kind of like that rotational symmetry. Okay. So then I need to flip the canvas. <clears throat> And um, and do the same thing, but on the other side, because we can't really address everything till we've flipped it. Flipping the canvas is a way to interrupt the brain from giving you the same information um, in a like as if it's, it's it normalizes information too quickly uh, for you, so you're just not freaking out. At the thought of reality every second of every day so the brain does this thing where it's just constantly making things look normal even if they don't so when you're painting you're fighting against your brain and the way to interrupt your vantage point is to flip the canvas again just trying to find a good spot for this eye and there's a lot of good spots for the eye there's a lot of potential good spots for it and um you guys have seen me talk on and on about the mouth and the cylinder. So this is me showing off that cylinder of the mouth, cylinder of the lips. And then I'm just going to really quickly fix the gaze of the eyes so they're looking back down at the viewer. <clears throat> Flipping the canvas continuously. All right, and then trying to find that other eyelid. I'll just outline it for now. And replace that with an edge, flipping the canvas once again. And then liquefy once again, and then raising the other eyebrow so it's where it should be. Ears are between the line of the eyes and the line of the nose. Again, the ears, you get away with a lot. And, um, okay, and then flipping the canvas once again. So right now it's in a good spot, but I feel like the eye could be a little bit, even more 
uh, tilted upward. It just depends really on the perspective we're dealing with, but I feel like the eye could be tilted a bit more. Okay. Um, I'm going to get rid of this star for now and just clean this up. So just on this, just on these changes, the realism is through the roof because we didn't change any of the way you drew these features. We just changed where you put these features. So before, after. Um, again, I, I don't know what that, that whole expression was. Maybe I can add it at the end. The next thing you did was that the environment just doesn't make any sense. The light environment doesn't seem like it's going anywhere. First thing though is just the hair. So let me take care of the hair. Maybe that'll give us some element of like some windy element. And what that will do is uh, maybe move the portrait along. You need bigger brush strokes for the hair. The hair should not be this multiple tiny brush stroke uh, mess. It should be a little bit more clear. And then that shadow that's, that's enveloping that inside part of those bangs. I think this is Jinx, am I mistaken? Um, that, that, that shadow there that needs to be like uh, established first and then we will kind of figure the rest out in a second. So all these like repeated brush strokes, they just make no sense. You, you, you need more large brush strokes less um, small brush strokes. And I'm gonna get my smudge brush and I'm gonna smudge the hairline completely. Really unnatural looking hairline. It felt like it was a wig or like a stick on or maybe she used some Gorilla Glue. I don't know, it didn't feel natural. So when we end up with this like blurred edge, then we grab the skin tone and with my blocking brush, I'm blocking in small brushes, large brushes, but I'm blocking in the skin into the hair, the skin tone into the hair, whatever skin tone is nearby. And then we blend that a little bit more. And that's how you make the hairline look a little bit more natural. All right, and I just ends up feeling very, very nice to look at because it's just like out of the way. It's not quite taking up the face. And then I use some hair and then brush that back inward and you just get this really nice out of the way balance. And I'm just letting some of that here also do the same thing. So I wanna fix this composition, but before I do, there's just some things that need to be changed. So she's tilting her head all the way up. Where did this jawline come from? Because this jawline is only there because we have an overlap. Is there an overlap here? When the head tilts up, there's no more overlap. So you get rid of that edge. I'm uh, just letting some of that hair actually behave like hair, which is maybe it's a little bit messy. It's just doing what hair does and it's just kind of flowing around. And I'm letting it kind of just catch some wind and maybe just have a little bit more going on than just a big block, a big wig glued together with super glue for that cosplay anime convention. You know, it kind of looked like that, like a, like a cheap wig that was glued together in, in uh, Cloud's hairstyle. I'm just adding a couple more of those um, hair, and just so that the hair feels like a little bit more natural. I'm not trying to do too many little brush strokes, ew. Uh, just trying to ignore those brush strokes I just did. I'm just trying to find a, a more like logical way that this bang happened. I guess this is it right here. We just create a shadow bend just like that. So that's wrong. And then I'll redo my brush strokes. But really cool colors, great skin tones. I think you did that well. Whatever you looked up, whatever you were doing for those skin tones, you did good. Those are some pretty good skin tones. Whatever reference you used, keep using it. Those are, those are adequate. And um, 
and then again I, I what the heck is that you know like it's just a lot of kind of just uh, rogue kind of splotches of highlights that are throwing away and uh, the, the space around here leaving us kind of missing some some elements of uh, of, of the of the background and the composition it's just one big block of super glued hair and so i'm just trying to break it up so, because it's taking up way too much room and i really don't know how this character's hair looks like i want to to do something different May, do we show the background like can we do that i mean i can do whatever i want i missed it <laughs> but i also want to show i want to share the original like follow the original lore um Let's see. Does it it does it match the original character to have the bangs of Jinx kind of showing in the background? Oh, oops. Um, anyway, so let's let's see if this makes any sense. Um. So all I want to do is just show the background in between all this hair. Um, just like, no, that looks terrible. But let, let's let's keep kind of messing with it. I just feel like more of the background showing in. Like that, that looks great. And the navigator never lies, so listen to your navigator. And I'm just trying to like show how there's like some hair moving. You know, there's not just complete blackout of the background. And then in this layer, I'm going to let some more hair hang out. Just kind of flowing in like that. This may be completely out of the character's lore or whatever. I, I don't really care. I'm just trying to show how that works together, how, what we need, what's left that we need. Um, maybe I'll add a little kind of bang there. So let's go back to the face. Now that we kind of figured out the composition somewhat, um, let's go back to the face. So the light is coming from that far side. And you use some really strong blocks. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to get rid of some of these like almost muscular brow, uh, bulky brow bends you have here. I'm going to smooth out the forehead. Cast shadow shouldn't be dominating like that. That was a really sharp block for just a simple cast shadow cast by some pink hair. And then I'm going to blend out that area of the nose you had there. I'm going to get my pencil brush. And so the light is coming in from that far side. So let's respect that. And we start by illuminating the very largest object in the scene, which is the nose. And right off the bat, I'm gonna grab like a pinkish color and use it right on the edge of the nose where I know a lot of light is sneaking in, creating that subsurface scattering. And that's gonna help me like cue me in later for applying that on a larger kind of more saturated scale we use the same thing on the nostril oops but as a color layer i'm just giving that nose some redness because that nose is really taking over the scene and then i'm going to start blending away some more of those little artifacts you left behind which are just these the kind of brush strokes that are a little bit more messy. There's no eyelid line when a character is looking down because there's no more uh, uh, crease because the eyes are no longer bent. All that's really left is like the sheen of the, of the eyelid, which I, I don't want to do that with dodge tool because it's kind of gross. Um, but yeah, the sheen of the eyelid, just like that. And just a little bit of those eyelid folds, somewhat still kind of bumpy, and blending those away. And then I'm going to grab the dark as dark and just try to apply it to the eyes to shield the eyes a bit. These eyes are almost fully closed. 
And I'm not sure why you made the lashes travel upward because these eyes are looking down. So the lashes would most likely travel down, creating like a little canopy. But you probably didn't want to lose the beauty of that, you know, that lash line. And she is tilted up, so, so I guess I'll leave it alone. But it looks wrong. Um, it looks a little bit wrong to do that. And because it's stylized, I got to leave it alone. And then we've got the lips, which are so over-rendered, so overdone. And if you see the before, it's very, very overdone. So the upper lip just needs to be a little bit darker. And we need to add that shadow of the edge of the lips right there. And again, I'll apply that, that, that expression, whatever it was, I'll apply it at the end. And I'll just leave it. But what I, what I know is I think this is the Star Guardian skin. What I know about those skins is all the characters look super jovial and happy and kind of like over the moon about ripping off Sailor Moon. Um, and so I'm just uh, blending that away. And then flipping the canvas and just continuing the same kind of mindset which is just try to get the skin to be like skin <clears throat> okay and then we've got this which i presume is the shadow of the nose just throw it in there just just don't be scared of it just throw that shadow of the nose in there and blur it out okay and i'm going to uh, blend out the start of that eyelid and bring some pink on the lower eyelid because eyelids tend to get very pink and so she's already so you know pink hair pink theme so it just makes sense to bring that in and then soft brush new layer the highlighter I'm gonna climb that cheekbone right out of that value drop that you had there and in, in doing that I can reveal the shadow of the nose so my photoshop's been crashing so what i'm just gonna do really quickly is just do that i fucking hate this thing okay um so there it is the shadow the highlight and i'm just trying to get that cheekbone to do something in this area Okay, and then merging that down. And then right here where you have this like chin shadow border, do that with soft brush, not a hard round. This is the edge of a shadow. Light doesn't, light, light doesn't um, have a sharp edge unless it's like extremely, extremely strong light right beside the face. Light does this thing, it's it's so cute, it, like it blurs, it, it just has this like softness to it. And so you have to remember, light is a softy. It, it may like, you know, be the king of everything, but it's also just got this gentle, if, they, if there is a single brush that represents light as a texture, it's the soft brush. And then I'm just, um, trying to make sense of the form of the lips and preserving your style where I can and keeping the form where I can. And then for the nostrils, again, these like little highlighter points, I wanna leave them alone because they're part of your style, but the nostrils, I wanna taper that. and give them an actual cavity. Okay, and then for the nostrils, I think they need to be adjusted so that they feel like they're more in that rotation. And then for the lips as well, they still don't feel like they're rotating properly. <clears throat> And so we, we try to get all of that stuff out of the way before we apply expression because expression is going to be that last thing that we add at the end. If you want to paint expression simultaneously, go ahead. Um, it's just going to kick you in the nuts later because you're, you're not 
really setting yourself up for success. You are giving yourself two perspectives you have no experience in, low anger, low anger, <laughs> low angle and three quarter view. And you are giving yourself an expression that is just so difficult to decipher. Like, is she pouty? Is she like manic, manic fairy princess? I don't know what the hell that, that, you know what I mean? Like that jinx thing. Like she's, is she, is she angry? Is she happy? Is she horny? Like what's happening to her? Um, so if you're going to do that expression, um, you have to kind of, uh, do it at the end, formulate it a little bit. And then adding that little shadow in there, a little bump for the chin. Okay, and then just throwing in a couple of smudgies for the lashes. Bringing in some highlighter for that inner corner. And then of course, some highlighter for the forehead. So in a new layer, just trying to climb the forehead out of whatever it's in, just to give it that dimension. And then there is the issue of the far edge of the face. So I'm grabbing this hair color right here, this one, and I'm radially dropping the forehead to hide under the bangs. And that'll make it feel more realistic. And that's kind of that shadow that's missing there that makes that edge feel very unnatural. All right, and the same thing, I'm doing it all the way around wherever the face hides under the hair. And then when it finally breaches out of that shadow, then I'm going to duplicate the layer, get dodge tool, and push all of these extra bits here out into the light. Starting with the nose, because it sticks out the furthest. And you see how I said earlier, the dodge tool will take care of the rest of that subsurface. And a little bit on the nostrils. And this all gets erased away. The intensity is not what I'm keeping. I'm just applying as much as I want and deleting away between the layers. Okay. So you took on way too much, my friend. You took on way more than you were ready for. And I think that's where most of that failure came from. And so moving forward, I really recommend, really, really recommend doing a study first. I can hear you rolling your eyes already, but it really is what you've got to do. It's what you got to do. And then this Cupid's bow area shouldn't have that big an edge because it's, it's being lit up. And so we can do something like this where the, the nose is kind of sticking out and catching some of that Cupid's bow highlight. Flipping the canvas to see if that even looks okay. That looks okay. Okay, so lots of changes today. This before and after is gonna be quite huge because I'm going for the full changes. And then the expression, of course, will be changed as well. This is more of a serene expression I have no idea what you were going for with that original expression, but I'm going to do something of my own towards that same expression. And so I'm going to get like color dodge and I'm going to try to get the eyes to feel a little bit more vibrant. And then on normal, I'm going to get that same color of blue on a more pastel and just brush it over the whole eye. Same thing on the other side. That other eye is behaving nothing like this eye. And then again, just blanketing those eyes in the lashes. And we'll talk about expressions right at the end. 
And that far eyeball needs to be tucked in under the edge of the face. Shouldn't be sticking out so much, it's like left the edge of the face. And I'm blending this eyebrow into the shadow. Getting some of that highlight from the forehead and placing it over the eyebrow to give us the sheen of the eyebrow hair. It just adds that bit of realism to the eyebrow. Remember, blending eyebrows is the way to go. And then in a new layer, I don't know what this layer is. I'm just going to merge it down. I don't know what it is. Um, okay, in a new layer, I'm just going to climb that cheekbone up into this uh, uh, temple line. Okay, and then in the same, another new layer, I'm going to grab this shadow and I'm going to try to like build the edge of the, of the temple line and the cheekbone that is rejecting the light and slowly start rejecting the light. Because the light's coming from that far direction, so we need to start building this far edge out. And we're using like a pinkish, blackish color here from this, this hair color. And that's how you make ha colors match. And I'm letting that color travel all the way down. So look at that. Do you see what that did? It gave us more structure. And I'm just going to taper that so it's there, but not quite like overly structured. And then the same thing, I'm going to borrow that shadow line, shadow color of the hair. And I'm going to use it on the edge of the face slowly tapering it toward that corner. And so we get like this really nice dark edge here. So you see that extra bone structure there? That's what made it look less bulky. And this whole area right here of the, of the neck, blend it out. Blend the neck out. Do not leave huge, gigantic, like muscular Tendons that just age the character, like blend them out. Or whatever those are, muscles. Blend those out. And then I'm grabbing like this pink edge color and I am adding it at the, at the edge of the lip. And just um, giving that lip a little bit more structure. So huge changes, and um, they're not small changes. I'm gonna give that nostril a bit of a pocket shadow. Don't know if it's needed. That other nostril may get just like a little bit of a hint. And one thing I want to do is, is like whether or not the shadows are being cast over this far eye. Right? Like is it is the nose like the only thing coming out? Uh, that makes sense a little bit, so let me just keep it and a little bit of the eyeballs. Okay, and then blending that, blending all those splotches away to the best of my ability. And the crown, all of that stuff makes no sense because she's tilting her head back. So like, is her crown like about to slide off? Um, so what I wanna do is just kinda tilt the crown a little bit more as if it's actually wrapping around her head and um, falling backward. So you see before, after, it just makes more sense. And then for the hair, new layer, I just want to show how there's variations in the hair, nothing too fancy. 
and um, merge those down. And then because the hair is also catching light, I got to throw some light on that hair. And I'm throwing the light on the hair in a band, in like a, a band type thing. So like a little belt of light. See that? It's just like a little belt of light like that. And this is going to take a lot of back and forth. That's the thing with hair and textures is that it doesn't just look good right away. Hair is like a lot of back and forth, which I don't have time for, but I, I'll try to do my best. And And um, just like a, a couple more like little changes. I'm not crazy about the hair. I would redo the whole thing because some of the starting brush strokes you have here are not a lot to work with, but I'll just throw in a couple. And then um, filter. I'm just trying to revisit this chin and this neckline. And then the mouth, again, it's all just whatever's left over from the original drawing. So I'm not trying to change it too much, but I want to give us a default so that we can do the expression later on. Okay, so the whole face is now rendered. The style has been kept intact for the most part. And now all that's left to do is apply that expression whatever it was i can't I, I don't even know what it could have been um so i'm just gonna try whatever uh i think it is which is i think like pouty or kind of snobby I, I i don't really know um so i'm gonna try to do it But before I do, these, these colors need to be matched. So this chin value right here needs to be the same pink. So a lot of that pink is repeated around the face everywhere. And um, that ear needs to be brought down, matching its environment and the little fold of the ear. Not every ear has folds, but I'm just, I'm just placing in whatever. Okay. So, um, so let's do the expression. Uh, so that hair, I'm just leaving it alone. Maybe I could keep it, maybe not. I, I don't know. Um, then we have the star. Oh, right. The star. Oh boy, the star. Okay, so I'm just deleting that. And then I'm just adding the star in that same general spot. But the star's got to look like it's on her face, so we got to move it to follow the contours of her face, meaning we got to pinch the backs, expand the legs, and just place it there. So it actually looks like it's attached to a face that's tilted back. And then not just that, I'm going to like cast a shadow. Oh, that's, that's terrible. Oh, that's horrible. Um, let me see if I can lasso it. That's a terrible lasso. Oops. Oh boy. Istabrax in for it today. My brain is like, there's smoke coming out of my brain. I don't know why I did this to myself. I don't know why I took on such a huge critique hour, but... <laughs> um, <laughs> Alright, so then drop shadow. Yes, I am that lazy. Drop shadow. The light is coming from that side. The drop shadow distance should be um, quite big, but not too far away. And then the color can be like any, any one of these colors. Um, 
and then I think there's the spread as well um, the size oh there we go and then the opacity so I'm just like I'm just finding a really quick way to do this you can hand paint it I just I don't I don't have that kind of brain space right now um, so there's just like a little drop shadow coming out of that thing and I'm just gonna rasterize it and um, just kind of edit it a little bit and then do that little glowy glow that you had before on a new layer okay um yeah so then now we can do the expression so the expression before was like all kinds of things um so it had like this snobby look to it kind of i i, I really don't know um and it like had this like uh angry eyebrow do you know what i'm saying kind of like eh, you know like she's just like whatever bitch um probably the face the artist is making while watching my critique hour <laughs> uh, i need confirmation i need confirmation i need to know if this <laughs> the artist that posted this is actually this mad <laughs> Um, so yeah, there's that expression. So two different eyebrow expressions go a long way. Um, and then there's the crazy expression, which is like Jinx crazy. Jinx crazy looks a little bit like eyebrows really high up, a little bit angry. And, uh, the smile is just a little bit unhinged and then of course there's the opening of the eye so there's like all this opened up so that we see a lot of that madness come through Then we bring the lashes back and place them in such a way that they kind of make sense. Oh. And we want to show more of the upper eyelid. There's no eyes closed when you're insane. Eyes wide open, baby. And so we want to just show a little bit more of that insanity there. So we're showing more of the white of the eyes at the top. And um, a little bit of that shadow, and then I'll just shrink the eye down. And then of course, there is the lower eyelid, which kind of squints a little bit while she's contemplating homicide. And I would add even more whiteness to the eyes. Let me see if I can pull it off like this. And then the other eye as well. There's just so many different expressions. I don't even know if this is Jinx just kind of went with it <laughs> I don't even know I haven't even looked at the chat is this Seraphine or whatever is this Jinx is this Sona like I don't know <laughs> I don't I can't keep up this cash grab skins okay um so there's like so many different variations of this expression and you know I'm not sure which one you were going for she's a new girl now 
Can't wait to hear the nitpicks from IG. <laughs> um, so like you have now, you have how many, how many expressions have we done? So we've done three expressions so far. We've done this one. Um, oopsie. So we've done this one, this one, and this one, which is like the neutral, let's say. Um, I'm scared to check the before because I feel like the expression is so much more different. Before I check the before, I'd like to do something else with the environment. Um, so, oh, I forgot to merge the star down for every jinx. It's okay, everybody gets, you get a car <laughs> and, and you get a car and you get a car, all right? All right, and then we've got the hair, which I guess I can get rid of, but I, I really need some kind of thing moving around in there. Um, and is this another star? I guess. And uh, then there's my diagram. So we're not going to know until we check the before which expression it actually was. Um, but before I do... I'm going to actually preserve them. And before I do, I just want to add in some kind of light element coming in from that far side. Just because there's so much light in this scene, I just want to add something. She's glowing, but she's also bored type deal. All right. So, so we'll see. We'll see. I'm scared. <laughs> I'm scared because I don't even know what it's going to look like. But, um, all right. So the first one we're going to do is the before and after for the basic critique that I did. So before, neck very, very thick. Perspectives all over the place. I can't tell if it's just standard through quarter view anymore, actually, or just through quarter view low angle. Because the thing that's giving it away is the nose. So before after and so we, we balanced the perspective we did everything we needed to do and then now i guess the closest expression is this one so before after i really i really don't know i really do not know i cannot tell before after um, I would like, I would love to clean up some of these edges some more, uh, before I go, but I can't, I can't keep editing it because I have three now, so I'm going to have to edit all three. <clears throat> so I have to keep doing the scroll before and after because I've got three different layers. So before, after, and I think it is this one. There's the insane one. <laughs> I don't think they were going for that. I just wanted it um, before, after, <laughs> and um, and that's it. So you are taking on way too much, young Padawan. All right, you're not even a Padawan yet. You're the you're the little ones, the little tiny babies that, that have the big ass helmet on. <laughs> what do they What do they call them? What do they call them? The the ones with the big ass helmet. And I really do recommend the hair because um, it, it just, it, you f it feels like younglings. Yes, my little youngling. <laughs> because it, the hair just it adds something to this empty zone. But if it's not part of the character's design or lore, then whatever. Um, you are taking on way too much, youngling. And you are not studying things as they should be. And you are hiding behind the skirts of style. It's not going to get you very far because I can still reach you. I'm the boogeyman and I'm going to reach you and I'm going to, I'm going to worm my way into your head and you're going to keep coming back here. You're going to hate me. But you're going to keep coming back here because you know that what I'm saying is true. You are hiding behind style so that you can just get anything made so you can call it your art so you can feel better about being an artist. Nothing's wrong with that. I did that when I was at your level. But what you have to understand is that eventually, somewhere down the line, you're going to say, I want more for myself. I want to learn how to render. I want to do more. Um, and you do it by doing more studies. The fun stuff 
comes to a complete halt. You're going to do so much studying that you're not even going to care about League anymore. <laughs> so stop playing League of Legends and start studying if you want to be the kind of artist that draws for League of Legends. Either be the artist that draws for League of Legends or play League of Legends. You can't have both because both eat your time up. One of them ends up being productive. The other, in 40 years, you look back and you're like, holy shit, I wasted my 20s getting gold or plat ranked instead of actually building skills that matter. So this is the, this is, I'm not gonna lie. You guys can hate me. You guys can throw shit at me. You guys can do whatever you want. This is the truth. And the truth is hard to hear. And if there's anybody good for telling you the truth, you're, you're hearing it from the right source. All right. Cause I'm not biased. I'm, I'm not here to lie to you. I'm not selling you anything. I'm giving you my lectures for free. So all you league people, you need to slow the hell down, stop playing league and decide in your life right now, am I going to be the person who plays a bunch of League or am I going to be the person who draws the art that's used in League of Legends? It's a simple choice. Um, and once you did make that choice, you start studying, you start taking things a little bit more seriously, you start taking yourself more seriously. And the studies you need to do are front view face, cylinders and, and spheres and cubes, um, head rotation sketch studies. Um, trace over diagrams, three quarter view face, three quarter view 14 day challenge, front view 14 day challenge, and then low angle uh, uh, head rotation study. So head that's rotating backward. And then you'll get to this point and then study a little bit of, and, and on that way you learn how to blend for skin, you learn how to paint hair, all of that good stuff. So before, after. It's the exact same thing. It's just a little bit more realistic, but the style has been preserved. And hopefully the expression has been preserved as well. The eye still feels a little bit big for me, but again, I'm just trying to preserve the style. Instinctively, I want to shrink the eye a little bit as well. Thank you guys for coming today to my critique hour. If you guys want to submit your work for critique, all you have to do is go to istabrak.com and click on the subreddit icon right here. That'll take you to my subreddit where people are joining by the hundreds now. Um, and uh, if you want to get critique, you got to give critique. Did you hear that? If you are seeing zero comments, it's because you haven't gotten to know anybody yet. So start giving critique. Ask for critique. Hey, can you look at my piece and critique it? That's what a community does. It communicates. So start speaking to each other and giving each other critiques if you want to get them. Um, and there's some beautiful, beautiful people here who are just so active, who are always giving critiques. You guys are amazing and, I'm, and I'm, I'm just so happy with all the active critiquers on this community you guys are keeping it alive um i will let you guys go thank you guys for watching and i'll see you guys next class on tuesday at 5 p.m eastern time don't forget portrait studio and all of that is still on sale bye guys